but you're putting our children at risk. Very, very effective, yet there's been little, very little response by governments, by ministries of health, in countries, in richer countries, in countries that have the income and the means to respond. So examples, I'm just going to give you a couple of examples on the internet, and there are lots and lots of examples in Russian as well. There's lots of examples in Spanish, Portuguese, French, and many other languages. I'm not sure about Kazakh, Kazakh language, but there are probably a few also in Kazakh language. So this is a picture of one of the websites. You see a crying baby. It's frightening. Here's an ugly needle. It's a emotionally laden photograph. And then they give you six reasons to say no to the vaccine. So they say pharmaceutical companies can't be trusted ever. Don't ever trust car pharmaceutical companies. Sure, they're there for profit. That's absolutely true. But don't ever trust them. All vaccines are loaded with chemicals and heavy metals, which is not true. There are very low levels of aluminum, which is not a heavy metal, by the way. However, the levels, the concentration of aluminum in some of the vaccines is lower than the aluminum you find in mother's breast milk. And there, the heavy metals just are no longer in the uh, current vaccines that we provide to people. Vaccinated children are the unhealthiest, most chronically sick children. This is bad science, but this is what they claim. And vaccinated children are the unhealthy. Oh, I'm sorry, that's twice. Again, I, there was a corrected version. So these are conspiracy theories. Other countries are waking up to the dangers of vaccination. Absolutely true that there are many countries now where the anti-vax movement is growing, is getting stronger. So they use that justification to say that this must be true, because the anti-vax movement in other countries is also growing. Numerous vaccines have already had problems that removed from the market. There's been a handful that were removed from the market. They had some problems, but those are very few. And currently, the ones that are being provided are safe and have been tested, gone through the whole testing process of phases one, two, and three, and uh, and. <coughs> population-wide testing to show that they're both safe and effective. And you can always get vaccinated, but you can never undo a vaccination. This is an interesting concept. Because once you vaccinate your child, you can't go back and undo it. So you feel like, if I don't vaccinate my child, I still have the choice. It's a very kind of circular argument. This is always underpinned with citing of bad, fringe, or incomplete science or findings that are taken out of context. This is some of the science, so-called science. If you really evaluate this, you can't find this anywhere in the peer-reviewed published, uh, published literature, where they show that, and you see these large, giant pictures, that there are many more allergic rhinitis children who had the vaccine there are learning disabilities, much higher rates if you had the vaccine, ADHD, autism, all of these terrible, terrible diseases are associated, according to this website, are associated with vaccines. Yet, if you look at the literature, you don't find any of this. And then finally, they try to justify it further by showing books that show the dangers of vaccines, and they make sure that they're all by physicians, by Thomas Cohen, MD, by Russell Blaylock, MD, by Robert Mendelson, MD. So they want to show that this is real science, that this is a very serious problem, that we're killing our children with vaccines. It's establishing credibility, and then finally, we're establishing rapport. This is the woman who puts us together. Her name is Sarah. We don't know her last name. But she was a home economist. She runs a healthy home e economist website. And she goes on to explain that she has a master to, master's degree, and she's a mother of three healthy children. We all want to be mothers and fathers of healthy children. 
It's very important to look at this and say, yes, we want to be like you. We want to have healthy children. She's a blogger, best-selling author, and she writes about traditional diet and evidence-based wellness. And if you notice, it's nice to use the word evidence-based in this context because that's lacking in the website as a whole. Now, Pinterest. Does everybody know what Pinterest postings are, what Pinterest is? Now, the, oh, the large majority of postings in Pinterest are actually anti, anti vax They're mostly anti vax And the, the study of the anti vax movement there is that you see pro-vaccine postings are, make up about 18% of all vaccine postings in Pinterest. anti vax is 74%. Neutral, 6.9, inconsistent, 1.1. So you see that there's a lot more anti-vax postings in Pinterest than there is pro-vaccine. And here's an example. It says, helping destroy the lives of little girls. And now, boys, too. We're talking about the HPV vi uh, vaccine, the human papillomavirus vaccine, and, uh, and they're, they're telling you that they, they're going to destroy the life of this little girl. Look how sad she looks. It's very frightening. It plays on the fear of children's safety. And then here's another example. If you follow this up, you can't locate this story. But even if it's true, the child, there's no indication the child died. We can't tell, find the story anyway. But it tells horror stories. There's lots of horror stories about this poor child is a vaccine injury story. This is what's going to happen to your child if you get a vaccine. This is frightening. And there's very little response in richer countries to these problems, to these issues. And all of these are available to each and every one of you in Kazakhstan, in Armenia, where I worked before, in, in Caribbean countries, in South America, in Southeast Asia. It doesn't matter where you are. All you have to do is pull out your phone, and hook up to Google, and they're all there for you. So the anatomy of the anti-vax movement has been evaluated quite extensively in the literature. Uh, first, the lack of familiarity with diseases that vaccines protect against. Uh, if, if you don't know the disease, because there, there, there's not many of those diseases around, my, my father's my father's father, my grandfather, half of his brothers and sisters died due to diphtheria. This was before the diphtheria vaccine. Half of them died from diphtheria. But today we don't hear about children dying from diphtheria because of the vaccine. So when you see no children dying from diphtheria, why would you want to vaccinate them? Because there's no disease. This is a real problem to convince people that maybe the vaccine is keeping you from developing the disease if you don't see the disease anymore. It doesn't frighten you, but the safety of the vaccine itself does. So it's a real problem that if there's no disease, there's no concern, there's no fear of the disease until there's an outbreak. When there's an outbreak or an epidemic, suddenly the huge number of people that were supporting the anti-vax movement support vaccine programs. The sun changed because now they see the disease, they see deaths, and then they change their position. Knowing less but presuming more. There are people, this is the Dunning-Kruger effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect is when I know more than you do. You're sure, you're the expert, you do science, but I am intelligent. I read the internet. I understand what's really going on. I know you're part of the conspiracy. You know more than the persons who are trying to convince you otherwise. So there are those people also that are convinced they're right. They're convinced that they, what they have is truth, and they're trying to save people's lives. Fear for child safety, questioning the safety of vaccines. Well, again, you don't see the disease. You're concerned about the safety of the vaccine because you heard it might hurt your child. This the distrust of big pharma government, the health system, you don't trust those people. You've seen other problems before. You know, in, here in Kazakhstan, just a couple of years ago, there was contaminated blood in the south in a blood bank where a number of children developed HIV as a result. 
So you hear those stories and you say, how can you trust the health system? How can you trust the government? How can you trust pharmaceutical companies that are only interested in profits? Free choice. I don't want to be forced to have my children vaccinated. This is also the case not just of people who are normal, quote, average citizens in the population, but also physicians. And we'll see that shortly. Pro-safe vaccines. This is the movement they had. They said, we don't want the vaccines we have now because they're all dangerous. We want to have vaccines that are safe. Because all the ones we have now are dangerous. And finally, the pseudosciences, which are very, very common to prove that vaccines are dangerous. The anti-vax movement is spreading now from high-income countries, and there was a responsibility there for high-income countries to respond to this anti-vaccine movement, but there hasn't been. It's been lukewarm. It's been mediocre. So it's allowed the anti-vax movement to dominate the internet and to have a tremendous amount of influence on medium and low-income countries, especially as we translate it from English and Spanish and French to other languages like Hindi, like Kazakh, like Russian. And it's been primarily 